Welcome to another CTV Sports presentation. CTV Sports is brought to you by St. Clair Chevy, Buick, GMC, We Care. By Murphy Inn, Restaurant and Hotel in St. Clair. By North Star Bank, North Star Guiding the Way. By St. Clair Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, We Care. By Neiman's Family Market. By St. Clair's Ace Hardware and by CTV, Community TV, in Marine City and St. Clair. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to CTV Cable Channel 6. I'm Brad Robbins here along with Sam Schlaffer, and we have the pleasure to bring you some St. Clair Saints varsity boys basketball in the Macomb Area Conference Blue Gold Tournament. This is the semifinals, Sam, and we bring in a familiar foe in Lakeshore. Um, two hotly contested games between Lakeshore last time they came in, played the Saints real tough has some good size and athleticism. Yeah, and then uh, you mentioned the tough first, uh, the first game they played, the second game, St. Clair went down there and uh, beat them at their place, which kind of led St. Clair to their uh, first division title since 2011, and both teams come in at beating uh, blue division opponents, which is the league above the gold, so uh, we should expect a good battle here tonight. And with that, we've got some special announcements here today along with the national anthem from Coach Denny White. We'll send it to him, and we'll be back at the start of the game. Mario. 
gentlemen, we also would like to celebrate a couple of individual accomplishments by two members of our senior class. First, we would like to recognize Troy Disterath as the winner of the MHSAA Scholar Athlete Award. This is a very prestigious honor, and Troy is one of only four male athletes in Class B that the state recognizes as an exemplary student athlete. Troy had to write an essay to be considered for the award, and they also looked at the student's accomplishments in academics, sports, other extracurricular activities, and community service. Troy has quite a resume, and it is definitely a well-deserved honor. He is a great role model of accomplishment, both on and off the floor. Congratulations, Troy. <laughs> Lastly, we would like to recognize Ben Davidson as our school's all-time leading scorer. Ben has been a four-year starter and has racked up over 1,400 career points. Ben has rewritten the story records for St. Clair Boys basketball. Along with the career all-time scoring record, Ben also holds the single-season scoring record and holds various other program records in individual categories. Ben's hard work, dedication, and many hours spent in the gym have paid off. We have been lucky as a community to be able to watch him perform, and he will go down as one of the best Saints basketball players of all time. Congratulations, Ben. And now, ladies and gentlemen, St. Clair High School welcomes you to tonight's contest between the Shorians of Lakeshore High School and the Saints of St. Clair High School. Tonight's starting lineup in the spirit of sportsmanship read in alternating fashion, beginning with the Shorian. Freshman, number zero, Nicholas Almeida. For the Saints, senior, number one, Ian Jansen. For the Shorians, Junior, number one, Malik Hill. For the Saints, Senior, number ten, Mario Matson. For the Shorians, Junior, number five, Malik Minor. All right, long introduction, Sam, and a lot to be proud of. You're the Saints seniors, an outright league title, and then a special congratulations to Troy Disarath, the MHSAA scholar, as Coach White said, one of four males in the state of Michigan to win that award. Well-deserving, congratulations, Troy. And then obviously, to cap off, Mr. Ben Davidson, uh, over 1,400 points in a Saints uniform, obviously playing four years, quite an accomplishment. It's his future coach is sitting right in front of us from Ferris State. Yeah, and that, that just speaks to uh, I guess the consistency that Ben's had over four years and I mean the math that's between you know 17 18 points a game so that that's pretty impressive for, to carry on for four years and 
Um, he's, defi he's definitely earned it. Hopefully he can get some more of that consistency tonight and earn away into the MAC Tournament Finals. I know they want to go out on this floor and make it a, a lasting impression as they move on to the next step here and into tournament play. The Shorians control the tap. Shorians come out today with Nicholas Almeida, Malik Hill, Malik Miner, Evan James, and then of course the big man, Caleb Bates. Bates can't get that baby to go. And we've seen this the fourth, fourth shot for Lakeshore in this possession. Last time the Shorians were in town, uh, last time they were in town, we had a, a great job by Sean Donaldson of, of matching up with Bates and rebound, rebounding as a team. Uh, Mario Matson had a pretty good night that night as well. Bates for three off the heel, can't get it. And take care of Dodge Bolt there. That, was, that would have been the sixth shot that Lakeshore would be able to get up. Um, and for one of Coach Cheryl, seemed pretty uncharacteristic to go with that many shots. So we'll, I bet you we'll see them fix that here and as they go forward. Fortunate for the Saints. The Shorians come away with nothing. So 45 seconds of defense, and uh, they were all able to hold serve despite all the shots. Good matchup here for Davidson. Jansen tries one early and gets it. Three-pointer, Ian Jansen on senior night. Good, good time for the Saints. You know, it was frustrating as uh, it had to be on one end. It had to be, you know, equally as fulfilling on that end. To hit a good, hit a good look, run a good offense, and you know, the last game we did together, St. Clair couldn't, you know, couldn't pay for one <laughs> from distance in the first half of the So hopefully, that's a good sign of things to come. Yeah, it's been a, a little bit streaky for Ian Jansen. He's a guy that often shows up in bunches. Sometimes it's in the first half, and then fortunately, I think in that tower game, hit a couple in the second half. I know. He's gone on a barrage at moments. Let's see if they can ride the hot hand. Lakeshore answers with a two-point bucket of their own, and the Saints are back on offense. Obviously, scouting report for Coach Walton is going to say a lot about Ben Davidson as he took the steps out onto the center court tonight. So Mario Matson steps in and goes with the curly hair club and gets two of his own. And that might be that might be a matchup on that. And as Sean Donaldson commits the foul for the Saints, that's probably that might be his second. But if they're going to put Bates on Madsen on the perimeter, um, as you saw Mario there, just kind of attack, and Bates just kind of gave him that, you know, easy eight-foot jumper, and that's a shot you live with all day. And I think you're right. I think you see uh, Sean Donaldson, who is never a guy that lacks aggression, but sometimes uh, it costs him early fouls, and here that's the case, and that's a, big, uh, that's a big guy to have on the bench for the Saints, an energy guy, somebody who rebounds for you, and it'll bring in uh, Troy Disrath early on, uh, for his first rotation, probably a little bit earlier than is scheduled. Uh, but the bench for the Saints has been good all year, so ride that depth when these situations come up. Yep, and you really don't you don't win a league title without a strong bench with Mario Madsen uh, to the to the hoop strong with the finish. The same thing. He has Bates out on that out on the perimeter. He's able to attack a little quicker in foot speed there and uh, making the Shorians pay. Yeah, no secrets here amongst these two teams. They know where the matchups are. It's just about getting people in the right positions. That's a coaching thing. Uh, early on, Mario Matson asserting himself. On the other end, you got to watch and, and see if Caleb Bates can find a way to get some touches on the interior. When the Shorians came here <clears throat> early on, this pressure defense bothered the guards, and they never got him any good looks. Uh, in the second half, they did a better job, and it got a little tighter, uh, but the Saints held on. Good block there, I believe. Was that Matson came across for that block or Jansen? Unfortunately, uh, it was definitely Matson, and uh, unfortunate for Jansen, he wanted to recover the ball, but of course hadn't established in bounds, so he couldn't touch the basketball. Actually, pretty smart. Let it go out of bounds, set your defense, and try to make something happen here. Get a stop. Evan James, a little baby hook, can't get it. Other side, good tough rebound by Nick Olmeda, the freshman. He's a pretty solid player. We saw him last time, and it makes it eight to four. Saints still on top. They're going to get number five, uh, Malik Miner, with the block. Miner kind of turns his hip. Playing defense there. If you're not in legal guarding position, you're not going to get the benefit of a charge call. You turn that hip. That's a textbook block. Good ball movement here. Pichakowski tries three. Back rim can't get it. Caleb Bates with all that size gets a rebound. A little good, bit of a weak outlet. Yeah, good extra pass there by the Saints. You get a good open look. 
it's a great call in the middle there. Caleb Bates went up for the board, but in order to do that, he kind of pushed off and gained leverage. You see the Lakeshore coaches and fans aren't too happy with it, but you know, anytime you extend those arms, you can sometimes get away with it, put a shoulder into them and move them ever so slowly, but you extend those arms, you can get called every time. Bates defending Matson. Davidson tries kick. Matson can't get it. Long rebound goes to the Saints. Davidson tries. Got it. But Davidson for three, long range, dials it up and gets it. 11-4 Saints, five minutes to play in the first quarter. A little bit of friendly fire on the rebound there. Ian Jansen got swatted in the eye. Davidson tries again, back rim can't get it. Good rebound by Matson. Another good take, seeing what's there. Davidson goes right at Caleb Bates. Caleb Bates did a great job of defending, but good body control by Davidson. And a soft touch for two. And, you know, that was a perfectly officiated play. The ref let you know what he saw. He was visual with it, so both coaches had an idea. That was a strong take by Davidson, and uh, unfortunately a strong foul by Davidson right there on that end as well. Yeah, we mentioned, not, not that we focused too much on the officials up here, but we mentioned the fact that um, as you move on in the tournament, the expectation would be that you're getting some higher rated officials. and um, So that is an expectation here tonight. And so far, some of the little things that you notice, the officials seem to be taken care of. Number 33, Scott Got a bit of an injury here. After I, I mentioned the friendly fire on a rebound, Ian Jansen had rebounded, and I don't know which teammate, but one of his teammates came across and clocked him right in the eye. So he's going to go get looked at by Coach Culling, and Scott Selleck is going to get an early rotation for Ian Jansen. May just be as simple as, I don't know if he wears contact lenses. That yeah. can be a bear. Hopefully he's got another one in his bag. And it looked like what it was. I didn't see you know, blood or anything. And it looked like he was maybe searching for, for a contact. So hopefully it's just as minor as that, and he'll be back out in a few minutes. Unfortunate a little bit, seeing as he hit that early three, and he'd like to see if he can get another one. But 424 to play, 13 to 5, Saints lead. Saints showing some patience. It's been pretty up tempo this far thus far. Lake Shore throwing a little zone. Saints had some success against the man. Disorath dials one up, can't get it. Saints shots have looked on the mark. Yeah, good. I mean, a lot of good looks, good job working against the defense, and they weren't surprised by the zone there. Good job by Disrath there. Heads up, just not able to complete the steal. Good hustle play. Saints continue. They like this matchup. They like to have the Saints experienced uh, backcourt work against the inexperienced guards and try to prevent him from touching the ball, uh, Caleb Bates, at the point of attack. They think they can limit his touches by, by frustrating the guards on the one end of the floor because you'll see if... If the Shorians can, can get him the ball consistently, we don't have a great matchup for him. And unfortunately for St. Clair, in that play, Davidson picked up his second. As we talked about on this end, you know how Bates was able to stay straight up. Davidson on that end came down. And as soon as the after you said, oh, see your hands break that plane, they're going to make that call. With 3.50 to go in just the first quarter, and Ben Davidson with his second foul, uh, I'm almost certain that we're going to see him again in this half, but we're going to try to, I'm certain, Get him off the floor and, and ride a six-point lead here as long as you can with your leading scorer of all time <laughs> on the bench. That zone continues for the Shorians. They move pretty well in it. They got some good length. Good ball movement here by the Saints. Unselfish, intentional. Mario Madsen with the zone killing three. It's good to see Mario get going early. Usually, you know, he's one that gets going as the game goes on. He's at eight early points so far in the first quarter, and he, he looks like he can't play tonight. Not for nothing, Mario Matson has been fortunate to play on a team with Ben Davidson his entire career. That being said, Mario Matson would have been the best player on most of the area teams for a long time. He's also been here as a freshman, so deserves some recognition. He's kind of the... You know, the second guy often when you when you think of the two backcourt guys, they look similar, but there have been plenty of nights when Mario's come up big and had large numbers. And, um, you know, can't say enough about him and, and his senior night as well. And he's getting off to a hot start. 
Good patience by the Saints here. That's an aggressive again. Good jump stop. Feed to Eisenhart. Eisenhart kicks. Pichakowski, the same miss. He's yeah. had two looks from there. They've looked the same. Yeah, and that's a shot. If you're saying clear, you can live with the good patience and offense running through that. You know, for 30, about 45 seconds, able to get a good shot, you'll take that every time. 227 to play in the first. Shorians break the press. Little floater and a soft touch. Can't get it. Eisenhart with a big rebound for the Saints. And he's going to be held by Evan James underneath. Yep, and that's just a foul for Coach Walton that you hate to see 90 feet away from your hoop and you got a guy slapping on a rebound that was Eisenhart clearly had. And, um, you know, that's just a, that's a frustrating foul to give out. Correction on my part, I thought they got James, but it, look, or it looked like they had Evan James, but it looks like they got Malik Hill for the foul. Pietrakowski with a kick. Eisenhart's going to try that corner. He got it. And it looks like if you think that's a foul, it looks like if you're the Saints, if you can break that point of attack, um, I'm not sure how interested Lakeshore is in playing defense so far tonight. Um, if you can break that point of attack, you're going to have open looks all night. Now, if you knock those down, you might be able to breeze into the finals, but if those shots start to come up short, you know, then you're in for a tough four quarters. Yeah, the Shorians have been tough at the point of attack in the zone, but if you rotate a couple of times, I think the Saints have found some bubbles. And uh, hot shooting will also help, obviously, dismantle his own, make a coach think twice about it. Saints now with their six fouls. That means the next one puts the Shorians in the one-on-one -on -one bonus. Almeida long, can't get it. Madsen kicks. This rather with a step back. Who rattles out, look good. Good hustle by Disrath, good hands by Bates in a two-point bucket. Yeah, good hustle, good, uh, good uh, hustle on the floor by the big man. Good pass, way to crowd it, and then strong finish. Bates got a real, uh, like a tight end type build to him. Showed some good hands, ran the floor there. On the move finish. About a minute to play here in the first. Saints lead by eight. Nice offensive quarter for the Saints. 19 points thus far. Saints in a little bit of foul trouble. That includes Ben Davidson. Mario Matson has stepped in, done a nice job. Officials get somebody for a hold. Looks like they're going to get. Yeah, nice heads up play, like you said, by Matson. And, you know, a good cut by Eisenhower to see a, Eisenhower to see a, you know, a lane there and attack that. And, uh, good job by Matson to see him. Ian Jansen's got his eyes all fixed. He's going to come back in and give Troy Disserath a rest here. It looks like Dombrowski entered a, a minute ago. And Pichkowski is going to spell Matson here as well. Selleck tries that corner. Can't get it. Lots of shots coming out of that corner. Matt Eisenhardt asserts himself on the glass and gets two. Jesse Kramer enters the game and goes right at Ian Jansen, and looks like they're going to get him for a blocking foul. And as I mentioned before, Sam, we're now shooting the bonus. Yeah, and I mean, as smooth as this quarter's gone, gone there's already been 12 combined fouls, and uh, you know, just got to keep your hands off. The refs have made it, made it known that if you put your hands on somebody, they're going to make that call tonight. Foul shot rattles around and goes. Number 12, Amari Ruffin, comes in for the Shorians. Second one goes. Shorians opt to press. Looks like a man press on the full. And it's been the same, I have to say. You know, that's the same call that the Saints have had against them. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to call it, and as long as they're consistent, you know, there's really no, no way to gripe. And you know, if you're riding somebody with a body all the way down the court, you know, that's impeding their progress. And, and it is a foul, so as much as it, you know, fans don't like to see it slow the game down, if they're going to call it, you'd rather have it be consistent. There's got to, yeah, there's got to be an adjustment by the players and the coaches at that point. Uh, but if it, yeah, if it goes both ways, that's on the players, not the officials. So far, it's been put together pretty consistently. A little bit of confusion there. Uh, one official had the Saints in the bonus, and another said, no, nope, that's six. So they settled it with the official book. 
Turns out it was six. Saints inbound at half court. Now control with 30 seconds to go. Good ball movement here by the Saints. Looking for one now that it's under 20 seconds. He's probably going to come get this one from Dombrowski. Pietrzykowski makes a spin move. Tough shot. Wow. A real nice spin, one-handed floater with good balance and body control. Logan Pietrzykowski with a big bucket. And then the Shorians don't get a look. Yeah, like you, you mentioned to me, you know, the first time we did the game together, you know, Logan will probably get you four to six a game, but they're going to be big ones, you know. And those shots at the end of the quarter, those, you know, those shots at the end of the quarter are big and momentum can flip on that. So we'll be back in a second after we're from our sponsors. Enjoy the We Care Experience at St. Clair Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram during the 2018 Auto Show event. Lease a Ram 4x4 Bighorn for $116 a month. Jeep Compass $116 a month. Even a Dodge Charger for $108 a month. Plus, we have the best price guaranteed. Best service after the sale. Best value for your training. And the most friendly professional staff around. We appreciate your business. It's all about the We Care Experience. That's a 257 off I-94. Neiman's Family Markets, from produce, deli, bakery, meats, or even bagels. Neiman's Family Markets, they have it all on Kearney Drive in St. Clair. Neiman's Family Markets. Okay, back here, CTV Cable Channel 6, Brad Robbins, Sam Schwaff for bringing you some St. Clair Saints varsity boys basketball in the Macomb area tournament semifinals. Probably worth mentioning here with the Saints leading 23 to 13, that if they're able to hold it together and play three more good quarters, they'd have the opportunity to advance and play, I believe at three o'clock in Gross Point North on Saturday. Uh, the likely opponent, Sam, will be the New Haven Rockets. They are playing Warren Woods Tower today, but are heavily favored to run that. And then obviously and honestly, table, <laughs> run the table in this tournament. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the favorite to probably go and repeat as the state champions as well. I mean, they have, you know, a top three player in the state right now. And Romeo Weems is probably a top 20 player in the country in the class of 2019. Um, he's worth the price of admission. We saw him as a freshman. I haven't seen him since then. And when we saw him as a freshman, he was worth the price of admission. So you can imagine he's only gotten that much better. Yeah, we know what, uh, what to expect when it comes to the Rockets. And hopefully you get the opportunity to match up. That could be a potential regional opponent as well. So Coach Cheryl, they could benefit from, from seeing that. Hopefully you can get that win here today. Saints with the arrow to start the quarter. Dombrowski drives in strong. Good body control and a finish. Garrison Dombrowski with two. And Dombrowski's going to be a guy the Saints are going to need to step up with Donaldson and Davidson in foul trouble. Uh, a good take right there for him. And a good answer uh, by 12. Omari Ruffin from the corner for three. Ruffin with a knockdown. Well contested by Scott Selleck. A tip of the cap on a good three-point shot for the Shorians. Saints. And Coach Cheryl opt to leave Davidson on the bench. He's joined over there by Mario Matson, so the two leading scorers are out. Saints only rolling with two starters right now in Jansen and Pietrzykowski. A lot of offense, patience here. Pietrzykowski works on Bates, kicks Eisenhart for three. That one's long, long rebound. Nice job by Robert Turner Yelder. Good patience by the Saints here getting offense, just not able to connect an open shot. Yelder with some size, hooks Dombrowski, good body control by him, and gets a friendly roll for two. You know, and you mentioned it, we see Davidson and Donaldson going to come in. Coach, Coach Sherry always trusts his players, and like you said, they have to adjust. They're smart guys. They got to go in there and figure it out, especially if they want to play minutes in this one. Logan Pietrzykowski there. Ooh, a nice take for two. Turn Yelder. Good size kid, good rebounder. Doesn't look super comfortable with the basketball out in space. Bates drives in, can't get it. Dombrowski tried to charge, disrupted, but doesn't get the call. Chalk it up to good defense. Tough catch and shoot by Pietrakowski. And right now, he's just heat checking. Logan Pietrakowski on senior night against the Shorians. Coming up big. 
Yeah, and that, that was a, you know, a tough, you mentioned he had to gather and catch. Um, sometimes one of the hardest things to do is shoot a jump shot off a, you know, a pass that, to an area you're not expecting. He was able to gather himself, get his body under good control, um, rise up and fire. And uh, the last three minutes of game time is, you know, pretty big for uh, Pete Trukowski. He's, he's contributed well and helped the Saints, you know, not only keep a lead, but maybe build on to a little bit with their with their two best players on the bench, frankly. Yeah, forced Coach Walton into a timeout. It's also big, you know, if this thing tightens up and you got to use those timeouts at the end. So, yeah, Logan Petrakowski in a spot where, quite honestly, 80% of the scoring, or maybe more, for the Saints for the year is sitting on the bench with foul trouble. He steps up, and you mentioned it, we've said it, broken record style, that that's just kind of in his MO. So if, he's, if you need him to score, he will. Um, and he's had some, some terrific play here in the last four or five minutes. Big boost, Logan Petrakowski. Saints back in with their uh, almost complete starting lineup. Disserath joins the four other starters. Saints are staying aggressive. Nowhere to go for Donaldson. He loses the handle. Good defense there and recovery by Bates forces the turnover. And Donaldson put himself in a tough spot there and as as opposed it's probably better to take the old dead ball turnover there than to turn it over if guys flying around and maybe get a fast break opportunity the other way. Yeah and I really thought when Donaldson made his drive it was a good assertive drive. He stopped himself. Kind of a weird spot. You either go finish that with a reverse or go all the way through with the dribble. He stopped and got himself behind the backboard, made it tough on him. Bates drives in this rat tries to take a charge. I think he's there a little bit late and a little too deep. Yep, yeah, I agree 100%. And, you know, we got to give him credit where credit is due to get, in, to, get, to get on the tracks when, when Bates is coming through. And just got to get there a second earlier and he'd be rewarded. Puts him on the line. Anything less than two points is a win for Disarath with that foul. Probably gave up about 100 pounds to Bates on the charge attempt. And there we go. So can't get the first 509 to go in the second quarter 30 to 20 Saints lead by 10 both teams in the bonus so got to learn to keep their hands off one another if they don't we're going to see a lot of foul shots here in the second Bates splits it Shorians keep with the pressure Matson off the bench tries it Official calls that it hit a part of the basket structure up top. And both of the hoops here do that. As soon as the ball hits the rim and it goes high like that, uh, you know the wire, the wires the wires move. Um, so it get fooled a lot if you if you don't if you don't play here a lot or ref here a lot, you're gonna you know you're gonna make that mistake. But better safe than sorry. This wrath outlets to Donaldson. He realizes quickly there's no numbers and stops. Davidson cuts through with a floater, can't get it. Bates rebounds. Davidson probably better, would have been okay going all the way to the rack instead of floating it. Yeah, I think he kind of got himself a no man's land there. I thought he was going to go up with his left and be able to finish, and you're going to get Matt's not a hold there. I saw he looked like he had a handful of jerseys from my angle. So. Yeah, it's an easy call for the official as, uh, as Bates goes to retrieve the lob. Number 10. Bates' jersey separated from his body, and Madsen had a big old handful of it. Brady Delore is going to uh, give Petrakowski a well-deserved well break. Just Mario's first. So that extended break that he got between the second or the first quarter and, and the beginning of this quarter were not foul-related. Bates can't get the one and one. Donaldson with a rebound. With him on the bench, they miss stuff like that. A gritty rebounder. Davidson gonna pull, can't get it. Probably not a shot you wanna have Ben to take, you know. Um, kind of forced and that's a little out of character for him. Maybe he's trying to get himself going a little bit. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be like the school's all-time <laughs> leading scorer and have over 1,400 points to pull that one and get away with it. <laughs> Bates in good position there on top of Matson, and, and that's the matchup there that I think, you know, if you're looking at the swing of this game, if the Shorians want to get back into it or win it, that's going to be the one that's going to do it for them, and 
the Saints are going to have to continue to shoot well and find ways to get the ball into Ben's hands in favorable positions. Saints going to get multiple looks here. Disserath with a multiple look possession. Can't get it. And they're going to get Derek Wynn with a foul. He's outsized there by Donaldson. Donaldson's going to go to the line and shoot there one and one. You know, a lot of good looks for St. Clair, just not able to knock down those of the shots that were going a couple minutes ago. And you're going to have spells like this in the game. Um, just the, it's kind of matters how you react to adversity and see if they can straighten here. Caleb Bates checks out for a breather. Coach Walton going to get him some rest. It's a big opportunity for the Saints with Ben Davidson off the floor at the same time. See if they can use that depth and put a little more separation between guys in the white shirts and the red shirts. Right now the lead's at eight. And nine. Jesse Kramer controls against Delore. Long gun, no good. Tap back, Kramer just tries to save it in some way and it headed right out of bounds. Nobody home for the Shoreans. Malik Hill checks back in for the Shoreans. Mario Matson to inbound. Chance of controls. Shoreans look to be in. It's an extended man to man now. They're going to get Matt Eisenhower. He kind of lowered his shoulder in a weird way to go down and get the defender uh, who was pretty small, and they're going to catch him for an illegal screen. Yeah, you got to make sure you got to make sure your feet are set and they're not moving, or you know you can't move your body in any way. They're going to call that. Of course, illegal screen, not one of the shooting fouls for one and one. Yeah, I can see Coach Harrell's frustration. You know, if his guys aren't playing defense up to his standards. A lot of breaks out for the Shoreans out of things that shouldn't be happening. Quite frankly, just late in the, just late in the season. Jalen Jones at the line, he drew a foul. Brady DeLord checks back out, Logan Petrakowski back in. 3.07 to play, 32-24, Saints lead. Make it 25, up seven. Evan James checks, he's gonna replace Robert Turner Yelder. Derek Wynn applying pressure to Petrakowski, making it tough to inbound. Clear out for Matson. Donaldson sets his feet, tries it, can't get it to go. Look good, but no good. Battle for the board. Matson looked like he had it taken away. Things getting a little sloppy here on both ends of the floor. Good aggressive play, but Jalen Jones grabs the arm of Sean Donaldson, and that's going to send Donaldson down to the other end to shoot one and one. I think the intention here was for Coach Chero to do offense and defense with Davidson and Matt Eisenhart. The Helter Skelter turnover <laughs> messed that up a little bit. Donaldson can't get the roll. Win can't control. Donaldson goes all the way to the rack. You can't get it. Shorians might have been fortunate that they didn't get a basket interference call. Somebody went and pulled on the net. Good hustle play by Donaldson. You've seen that so many times that you really get the next possession by just kind of sneaking there on the outlet pass, just not able to finish the layup. Malik Hill turns the corner. Really nice play. Shooting that one from 15 feet off the bounce. Davidson a little bit out of control there. Throws it away. Hill left alone, he checks it, can't get it. Piedrakowski rebounds. Piedrakowski, that, that time a much better job. At number 12, Amari Ruffin, I think he was the one that got popped for the foul earlier, and he was squared up that time and forced Logan to try to turn his shoulders, and he ended up dribbling the basketball off of his own foot. 
And you just see the Saints kind of uncharacteristically uh, just playing a little too fast right now. And if you're um, Coach Cherry, you'd like to see maybe Petrakowski get to the middle on that and get your offense going. And uh, just going too fast last few possessions, I'd do a couple turnovers. 32 27, Saints lead down to five. They've controlled the entire half. Most of this damage done with Caleb Bates, the Shorian's best player on the bench. And they're going to catch Malik Hill with the classic swipe attempt from behind. He taps Donaldson. Donaldson's going to make his third trip to one and one. Got both of them the first time and missed the front end the second. So get back in the rim's good graces here. And it's kind of weird how this game's gone. You saw St. Clair's lead grow, you know, with their veteran players on the bench, and you see Lakeshore's, Lakeshore's lead shrink, or their deficit shrink with Bates on the bench as he's going to check back in here, looks like. Caleb Bates checks in for Malik Hill. At first I thought he was coming in for Derek Wynn, who might clip the 5-5 mark, so that would have been about a foot. With, yeah, with, <laughs> with no offense to Troy Disrath, when he's a, when he's a head taller than somebody. <laughs> You're giving up some size, yeah. Mr. Wynn. Just a sophomore is Derek Wynn. He's got some quicks. He's aggressive. Another underclassman in Almeida there. Bates tries three front rim, won't go. The Saints love that out of Bates. He did hit one when they were here last time, but you just, from a Scouting perspective, you want him shooting out there, that's great. Shorian's bench celebrating good defense. Jansen controls, Almeida, nice job defending. Shorian's having a nice defensive possession here. Tough to crack, steps all the way through. Long gone long. Can't get it, it's gonna stay with the Saints. Shorian's fans and coaches lobbying for a travel. I'm not certain it could have been. The official right there determined that Pietrzakowski kept the, the pivot foot, was able to kick it out. This rat has to go deep, dangerous pass. And Almeida defended, it gets tapped out of bounds. It's all Pietrzakowski could do. Yeah, and he, a little too much air into that if you're distressed. Um, you know, that, that, like I said, that's all Petro could have done, and good job not to give up the layup. And the Saints will set up on defense. 38 seconds to go. Big defensive possession here for the Saints. I'm sure Ants could technically cut it to a, a one-possession game before half. Jalen Jones with an ill-advised three. Going to give the Saints the ball back, and they may operate trying to get one here. And that's something, that's a shot Coach Walton's not too happy with, you know. And one, or two, one or two passes and you're, you're shooting the ball. And I think Wynn would have had his five second call right towards the end there. He put the hand on the hip and kind of dislodged Disrath. It was good defense up until that point. And here was Coach yelling. I think he got a little too, a little too over aggressive and unfortunately um, the, the, the good defense, about four and a half seconds, couldn't get to five. Point of emphasis in this game has been you got to keep your hands off. Win playing good defense, but if you put the hand on once and keep it, the ref will let you usually get away with it. But the issue was that Win put it on once, took it off, and when Disrat tried to change directions, put it back on. And then he's able to complete both free throws and bring good. the Saints lead back to eight. Good job by Coach Sherrill getting Sean Donaldson out with his two fouls. They want to pick up a third and last possession here. Almeida with the travel violation. He wasn't giving that ball up. An unlikely heave for Troy Disrath. And Saints do a good job. I know we got a special presentation here at half that we're going to stick around for and cover, but Sam, the Saints out to a 35-27 lead with a really nice first quarter and a little bit of a downer and some foul trouble in the second, but they held serve and now hold an eight-point lead. Yeah, and, you know, I, a little sloppy there. Um, that's a little uncharacteristic for a Coach Sherrill's team, but 
Lakeshore was, you know, not playing good defense. St. Clair kind of fell into that trap and gave up some, some my characteristic um, runouts and things of that nature. And they had to the half here up 35-27 as it turned over to Coach White uh, for a special award presentation. Obviously, have some coaches in our building who do a great job. I think while they're setting up and we're we're getting ready to see this presentation, I, I don't think we get the opportunity to mention. Uh, the people behind the scenes on a basketball staff quite as much. You got Bill Stidham, Tom Lesko, Matt Disrath, Ryan Siplick, and Todd Calling for Coach Sherrill. When you mentioned that Coach Sherrill did a good job of getting Sean Donaldson out of the game, those were the guys I thought of tugging on his shirt and letting him know. So shout out to those guys, very worthy coaching staff. Uh, but we'll turn it down to Coach White as we recognize some special coaches at St. Clair High School this year. Congratulations to Coach Ken Moreski and Mark Day of Girls Golf at St. Clair High School, as well as longtime cross country coach, legendary coach, and Hall of Famer John Davidson as they receive their awards here. Sam, I think we're going to take a quick break, come back in a few minutes, and bring some second half of Mac Turney action to the people. CTV will be back. Murphy Inn, Restaurant, Spirits, Hotel, all in St. Clair. Before or after the game, stop at Murphy Inn. Different specials every day. Happy hour, two to six daily, and seven vintage hotel rooms. Half off large pizza every Monday, karaoke on Wednesday and Saturday, live music on Thursday and Friday. Murphy Inn has private dining area for showers and family parties. Murphy Inn, Restaurant, Spirits, Hotel, in St. Clair since 1836. St. Clair's Ace Hardware in the Riverview Plaza is now open seven days a week for your shopping needs. Everything you need from auto supplies, wiring, paint, craftsman tools. St. Clair's Ace Hardware has picnic items, a complete gift department with candles and more. Don't miss the specials on Valspar paint. St. Clair's Ace Hardware in the Riverview Plaza. All right, welcome back. We're going to get ready to roll here on CTV. I'm Brad Robbins. This is Sam Schweifer. Have some second half Mac Turney basketball action for you as the Saints lead 35-27. And kind of a, uh, a trying couple of quarters there, Sam, for the yeah, Saints. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, for lack of a better word, helter skelter. Um, you think the, you, the times you saw St. Clair able to set up their offense, they're able to get some shots and be successful, but those times that they're able to get in their offense are few and far between, uh, mostly because Lakeshore was pushing the ball down to their end, and that led to fast breaks for St. Clair. Um, and they came out like gangbusters shooting the ball. And, I mean, 35 points is nothing to <laughs> in a half to shake a stick at, but you feel like they left a lot of points on the table, too, uh, a lot of good looks yeah, that, that weren't capitalized on. And obviously the, the foul trouble didn't help uh, the Saints get any type of rhythm. Ben Davidson, Sean Donaldson, uh, early foul trouble, I think. Kowski, you know, contributed to that a little bit, and the Shorians were at one and one real early. So they're going to control here to start. Saints up by eight. See if they can hold out and move on to the finals of the MAC tournament. Yeah, because I'm Lakeshore, Davidson on Bates, 
He's going to try to isolate Bates on him and try to get Ben back on the bench with his third. And, um, they had a good match up there down on the block, and they weren't able to exploit it. As you mentioned, kind of an interesting uh, couple of spots in the first half where when the Saints had to bring Davidson and Matson and, and Jansen with the contact issue all off the bench at the same time. The Saints did a good job, and the, the guys who stepped in, Logan Petrakowski is a starter but was playing with a lot of subs. They, they made a little run, and then uh, on the flip side of that, the Saints starters came back in, and you mentioned Bates was on the bench, and the Shorians made their run. So Good pass. Excellent feed. Donaldson, and then Davidson cleans it up. That's an easy one. He kind of went through a spurt, did Ben Davidson, that he played a little bit out of character at the end of the second quarter. So hopefully he can calm himself down and clean it up just a little bit. Bates fires long. Matson defended. You know, and you hate to, you hate to speculate, but, you know, you have Fair State's coach two rows down in front of us, and a lot of times you see college commits with their coach in the building sometimes try to do too much, you know, and I'm not sure if that's the case here, but a lot of times that's what you see, and... Uh, I, I, I bet we see Ben settle down here in the second half and um, we uh, have the water find its level. After a good rebound by Ian Jansen and then a tie up, Saints get the ball back. Some ball movement, they're gonna probably try and get Davidson a look. He looks like he's defended by number one Malik Hill who gives up some size. There's the look right there, took a while to get there. Davidson has it tapped away. And you can see the Saints focus to get Davidson the ball. You know, had the back cut in the first possession and they're trying to work him in the post here in this possession. Another good take, Mario Matson, who started out real hot. In the first quarter, cooled a little bit in the second, but gets a, another quick bucket here early on in the third quarter. And that's where you saw the Saints have their most success when Mario was able to attack and get to the hoop and either finish or disperse. Made a good change of pace, dribble. Gets all the way to the rack. No resistance there. Yeah, no resistance, good job by Bates there. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of a clear out, but it's, uh, it's all part of the game. Jansen gets his feet set. Just short front rim, good rebound by Matson and kick to Donaldson who gets another look at it. Bates skies for the rebound. Around the perimeter to Almeida. James Long, raindrop shot. He shakes his head because he knows it wasn't a planned bank. They all count the same. Makes it 39-32. Coach Walton will tell us he called it for him in the air. <laughs> I don't have really much of a comment on that one. Donaldson takes it to the teeth of the defense. Jansen tries again, makes the adjustment. This time saw off the side. Bates with another board. He's well over 10 rebounds tonight is Bates. Heat check for Malik Hill. Can't get it. Bates gets another board and a tap in. And Coach Walton, interestingly, is going to take a timeout. Must see something that he wants to adjust with. It's 39-34. They've closed it to five. And I'll be honest with you, I thought that timeout was coming from uh, the St. Clair sideline. Uh, but like you said, Coach Walton must have something that he wants to exploit, either offensively or defensively, and he's going to set that up right now. But um, Shorten's come out with pretty good energy here. You know, you, you, get, you get a bank three, you get an offensive rebound put back, and cut a 10-point lead to five real quick, and St. Clair has been able to hit some open shots. Yeah, both times the Shorians and Saints have played thus far this year. The Saints have won, but the first contest here was tight, 66-62. On the road, I think it was tied at halftime and through three quarters. The Saints held a small advantage. They ended up expanding that uh, at the end of the game. Oftentimes, that's due to those foul shots at the end. So, expected this to be a hotly contested game, and that's what we're getting here. And Coach Walton tries to go with the press, and I see him throw his hands up at the freshman, Almeida, who, who didn't really complete the effort there yeah, that he was looking for. You can't give up the baseline on a trap like that and lead to a, what well, could have been an open shot for St. Clair to win able to capitalize. Now, Almeida might have bailed out a little early on what was taken a timeout for. Donaldson goes up strong. May have got a little contact, but doesn't get a whistle. Saints are going to control and get a second shot. Tough shot there by Pichkowski. 
off of the dribble. That is not an easy shot, folks. It's the second time, maybe third time tonight, he's hit a really tough look. And Logan Petrakowski he keeps coming up with big buckets. Yeah, like, said, like a shot like that to weather a run. Um, if you go back and say he was able to finish this game, you kind of go back to that as a turning point. It's a big shot. Saints get the ball back, looking to expand the lead back to double digits. Madsen down in the post. Not able to finish. Good luck, though, for the Saints. Good defense there by Donaldson. Missed his defensive presence in the first half with some fouls. Three fifty-one to play. Third quarter. Saints lead by eight, 42-34, and in a complete flip from what we've watched in the first half, neither team has a foul yet. <laughs> Tough spot. <laughs> Davidson shows good core there as he keeps his head from bouncing off the, <laughs> the floor. That's the first thing I look for, and he was able to slide the whole way on his back. We'll credit Coach Cheryl's conditioning program. And that's, a, that's a tough spot. I think it was Jansen to put him in that spot. Yes, his momentum was taking him uh, the opposite way he needed to be taken, but he said good body control not to, not to hurt himself. Saints, good patience here. Davidson almost commits his feet there, but wisely gives it up, gets it back. He's gonna work on Bates. That's a tough spot for Bates to defend, fortunate there. Davidson's shot looked good the whole way and rattled out. Sellett's gonna try one, can't get it. Long board goes to Bates. Once again, good look for the Saints. Just you know, not, not able to get the benefit of the doubt. Malik with his toes on the line, it's gonna be a long two. It's called right away by the official McAndrews on the other side. Good job of emphasizing that to uh, the coaching staff, although they're not buying it right now. No, Co Coach Walton's looking for the three, and um, you know his, his whole front half of his right foot was on the line there. Donaldson shuffles his feet and turns it back over to Lakeshore. Full court pressure applied by Selleck here. Hustles to get back in front. Minor creates separation. Saints doing a good job of pinching Bates underneath. You got a backside helper with Davidson. And Donaldson's got to be careful. An absolute foul. He can't come across the hands like that. And, uh, dislodge the ball as Disrat's going to spell him. Matt Eisenhardt also going to check into the game with Disrat. He's going to give Pietrakowski a well deserved rest. Evan James. Get Bates a high post touch. Troy Disserath reaches in and grabs the wrist. Could see that one pretty well from here. I jinxed us on the no foul talk. <laughs> as we've had three since I've said that, which was a minute and 20 seconds ago. Long inbound to Bates. Kicks back, Almeida. Can't get it. Another board. Nice aggressive play by Selleck. Gets Disserath out in front. And he's fouled. Yep, a good, really good job there by Disserath. If he wouldn't have maybe went and drawn that foul, there's a good chance that body comes across and makes that block. So good job by him to get the draw foul on the made And good job by Selleck to tap the ball away from Bates. And good job by Eisner to get the ball up quickly to Disserath. He's able to draw the foul. They did a nice job getting the eyes ahead. Really, probably a good foul if you're Almeida. It ends up with zero points for the Saints. Davidson can't hit his. He's visibly frustrated with his cold shooting as of late. Almeida, good take, goes right at Selleck. He gets two points, and all of a sudden we're looking at a four-point Saint lead, 42-38. 
Saints been a little cold. Good take by Matson. Made a big adjustment. Official doesn't see any contact there. And minute 34. And Almeida goes to the rack. Gets it down to two. Davidson streaking the sideline up ahead. He's going to go. Can't get it. And Almeida. Three consecutive possessions and all the momentum right now is moved directly onto the visiting bench. It is tied. And Almeida's going to the line to see if he can give the Shorians, I believe, their first lead of, of tonight's ball game. Yeah, that was really big swing there. St. Clair missed it, was able to miss a couple of, not able, missed a few layups and Lakeshore able to get out and capitalize on the miss each time in the fast break. And Almeida, almost the exact same shot, three times in a row down the court. Your coach Shero and the Saints, not really a time to panic. Got to answer with some just normal offense. I think the last two or three minutes from the Saints has been uncharacteristically cold and off tempo and off schedule. Got to do the things that you do well. Move the basketball, get good shots, and trust that they're going to go in. Yep, they give, they've given the Shorians some life, you know. This is the first time you see some hot, some pep in their step on defense, and a little momentum will do that. We'll do that for a team. Shorians in a mock-up 1-2-2 two, two zone. Rotating pretty well, kind of bothering the Saints organization a little bit. Then Davidson goes right at Bates. Little contact there, but there's no call. Outlets ahead, two on one. James goes right at Matson, and he gets two. That's going to force Coach Sherrill into his first time out of the day. 38 seconds left in the third quarter, and the Shorians have come out and made a statement of their own. And you got to give the Lakeshore credit. They are getting down the floor quickly, and St. Clair is not getting back. Not characteristic for them. Um, and Lakeshore is able to get out two on ones, and they're making their laps, and St. Clair is not able to do anything against that zone right now. So we'll see what they draw up here, and I'm sure we're going to have a good look here. If I'm Lakeshore, don't try to get too cute here. I kind of stay in there. That's giving the Saints some fits. Yeah, I would. Uh, I think right now, if you're Coach Walton, you're looking at challenging Coach Sherrill to get something drawn up that's going to work against that zone. I think earlier on when the Saints were shooting the basketball a little bit better, they were able to shoot uh, Lakeshore out of it, but they've gone back to it here and found some success. And as you mentioned, right now they're rebounding really well out of that zone, and the guys at the top of that zone off those rebounds are getting out and creating odd man situations, and, and they're winning them. So they're either getting to the line or making buckets or both. And they're doing a good job of finding that outlet guy and able to, able to, to finish, and they're going to stay in that zone. Matson works on front man. That's Malik Hill. Saints got a two guard front against it. Kick the corner. Pietrakowski with it. Kusarath controls. A little better patience here for the Saints. Going to get the touches they want. Davidson's working on Bates. He couldn't see a, a slide in for Pietrakowski. Pretty good defense there by the Shorians again. Almeida contests the Matson three-pointer at the quarter. And the Shorians haven't led, but now are going to take a three-point advantage into the fourth quarter and, and put the Saints' backs against the wall on senior night. Yeah, just a uh, very, very good defensive possession there for Lake Short End. They carried the momentum, and they're going to carry it into the fourth here as we take a break. North Star Bank, your local community bank serving St. Clair, Sadlock, Curran, and Washington counties. When you need a local community bank for home loans, checking, savings, and other banking needs, North Star Bank is the community bank that you want to deal with. The bank that will take care of all your personal and business needs. North Star Bank has a new mobile application that you can download to make banking even easier. North Star Bank, guiding the way, member FDIC. There's so much more to the car buying experience at St. Clair Chevrolet Buick GMC. With pickup and delivery to your home or office. Harvestment price match guaranteed. Even free loaners with service work. Because we really do care in St. Clair. Right now you can get a full service oil change with a 27 point safety inspection and a car wash for just $29.95. We really do care in St. Clair. St. Clair Chevrolet Buick GMC. Exit 257 off I-94. All right, welcome back everybody to CTV Cable Channel 6 as we have worked three quarters of the game here and now find 
the Saints after a, a 20 plus point first quarter, a solid second quarter which gave the Saints 35 points, just able to muster seven points in the third quarter. Um, stayed out of foul trouble but now trail in the game by three. Yep, and then it's the old adage you've heard a hundred times. It's really hard to beat a th team three times in one season. Um, and Lakeshore wasn't going to let the Saints run away with this game. And um, good for them for making a nice little run here and making this a game. be interesting to see how the Shoreians choose to work against the Saints. They went to that 1 2 2 zone and gave them trouble. Saints haven't solved it yet. I wouldn't be shocked if they're still in that at the defensive end. And if they continue to shoot the ball well, it's going to make it a taller order in the comeback effort as Malik Hill hits from about 17 feet. Expands the lead to five. That's good. If you're saying curve, it's a shot you can live with. It just uh, they're they're hitting some tough shots right now. Good defense by the Shoreans. A little bit different look. They did go back man here. Madsen wraps around. Probably does a little too much and trying to give it up to Donaldson. Donaldson was there. Just to, said maybe just a little too much to drop that ball off instead of trying to make a tough wrap around. Saints are going to want to defend, apply pressure, and push tempo. And that's not Madsen. the hook. Yep. Probably a good foul. It's, it's not a shooting foul, and there was a clear advantage. Bates was going to beat him to that spot. Hooked him to try to get back in front. It's called for the foul. Got to love that luxury if you're Coach Walton to have an inbound play that says, hey, tall guy, go to the back and catch. We talk about him being kind of built like a tight end. Well, they use that to their advantage on baseline out of bounds for sure. Good drop off by Almeida. Good look and a finish. Saints need something to quell the momentum that the Shorians have right now. And, and that, that call right there, it's interesting. I think we saw that quite a bit in the first half. The officials were very apt to make that call and we haven't seen it here as much in the second half because we've definitely seen that exact run in between Davidson and the opponent a few times Davidson tries to scoop it from behind can't get it Bates altered his shot then Almeida's had a great second half but very active and he's going to go to the line again these are just things that are on characteristic of the Saints just not getting back and giving up one quick pass there and you're seeing Almeida attack the hoop and Davis picks up his third. And, um, I'm just not used to seeing maybe like this lack of effort in the defensive end from the Saints. A trip to the MAC tournament finals and Gross Point on the line. The loser of the game will play the loser of Warren Woods Tower and New Haven. The winner obviously plays the winner of that game. Lady Saints had some success on Saturday in their trip to the MAC Tournament Finals, beating Kloss in 38 to 30. So congratulations to Coach Boulard and the Lady Saints on uh, outright league title and then cruising all the way through and winning the Silver Bronze Girls Tournament. Yeah, that's really big for the girls program, you know. And it's been a while since they've been able to get a league and Coach Boulard able to do it. And uh, those girls have worked hard and very proud of them. Unfortunate there, Malik, or excuse me, Malik Miner does a great job of blocking the shot and then as it came down, it went right off of Logan Petrakowski and the run continues for the Shorians. I think it's at 16-0 16, 16 right now. Um, at halftime, you mentioned you know, the unseen people behind uh, that make a basketball game go and we'd be remiss if we left out you know, Marie McCabe and Mary Fajardo for all the work that they do on, on the scorebooks for the Saints. They've been doing it for years. You know, they're in the Michigan High School Basketball Coaches Association, Association Hall of Fame, and um, it makes it easy on the coach. You don't have to worry about that part of the job, and they keep the cleanest book in the MAC, if not the state. Um, and they're a big, they're a big reason to success the boys and the girls program, and um, they truly love what they do, and they do it for the kids. And uh, these, these both the programs are better off with them. Those two, in addition to Bill Duro, who runs every clock in St. Clair County, <laughs> continues to do a great job. You don't notice the clock keeper until they mess up, so you don't often get to, to notice Bill Duro, who is immaculate on the ones and twos that keep us informed. <laughs> you see St. Clair here going with a little bit of a zone. 
you know, to try to turn Lakeshore over and maybe leave the Serrano to their own and just miss an opportunity right there. Not a bad idea if you're Coach Shero. They've pretty much been exclusively a man-to-man -man team all season. And just like Lakeshore flips to an odd front zone on the Saints, they've kind of answered the bell the same way. Petrakowski dials one up, gets hammered, nails it. And he's their guy. I just texted his dad a minute ago. I said if the Saints needed three, Logan would hit a four, and he just did. That was a big one. Look like at he tried to get a foul with, wasn't able to get it, but hit a big shot to kill that run and maybe get the Saints some momentum. Long fire, Evan James can't get it. Madsen gonna go right at Malik Miner. Euro steps him and gets fouled, and the Saints energy has visibly gone up. You can, and you can also feel it in the yeah. gym. After that timeout, you know, they came out came out, their feet were, you know, their feet were moving on defense and they were able to get the flexion, get down, get a big three, and Mario was able to attack and now he's up the line trying to cut in the lead. Matson can't get the first to go. Second one goes. Saints cut it to five and regain some momentum. Deflection by Matson. Unfortunate for the Saints, can't get it. James inside, goes up, it's an and one. That's a big bucket and a good answer for the Shorians. And that's just, you know, a tough break. Saints get the tip, not able to corral it. Lakeshore, good job in the reversal. Find the open guy down low and able to get the M1. Evan James, about a six foot two inch forward on the line trying to finish a three point play. Off the back heel, doesn't go. Ian Jansen controls. Davidson searches. Goes in, right on Bates. Nice reverse. Unfortunate. To not get an and one there. Good answer. Maybe that's a shot that'll get Ben going and get the Saints moving forward. Spin move. Doesn't come up with anything for Bates. Jansen at the other end tries to go up. And Amari Ruffin. Can't finish. Donaldson's going to get a foul called on him. And it's going to be a one and one opportunity for Caleb Bates. Donaldson's got to be careful. They're drawing back and forth. Probably a good foul by Donaldson. Um, what prevented the layup. Going to make him earn it with the one and one at the line. And uh, we got to be careful talking after a foul like that. Those refs look to maybe give you a T, and they're still talking a little bit. Officials having a conversation with Donaldson. Trying to clean it up so there's no additional items. I think Bates took exception to the hard foul. Bates makes the foul shot. Troy Disarath going to check for Donaldson. Might be a bit of a cooling off period for him with his fourth foul, I believe. Look for the Saints to try to try to beat that defense down the floor. That's what they've been doing after that timeout. And we go from here. Bates gets both. Double clutch hurt Matson there as Ian Jansen had his feet set ready to shoot and was unaccounted for, but it was almost like Mario couldn't believe his eyes and hesitated on the pass. Gets deflected out of bounds. Side feed to Davidson. He's going to try to work on minor. No go. Jansen corner. Nothing home. Halfway through the fourth quarter. Saints down by seven. Need a big bucket here. Lakeshore doing a nice job defensively, forcing the Saints to have a long possession and not get any open looks. Good body position there and almost an unfortunate call on the hook as Mario Madsen had a clean layup coming and the official blew the whistle on a hold. 
if you're St. Clair, you know, you have to get back in this game. If you're taking that long possessions, you better, you know, come away with something on the end of it and play solid defense and Lakeshore can call a full timeout here. So Yeah, no doubt about it. The Shorians have charged back and now have the opportunity to use the clock to their advantage. Both teams have a couple timeouts left. I know Coach Walton, I think he's used three. Coach Shero, maybe just one or two. So you might see some stoppages here in the final going, a little chess being played between both staffs. Yeah, I, I, I won't be surprised, you know, if I'm St. Clair, I might have zeroed out, you know, Evan James, although he does have 11 points, he doesn't have a shot that makes you think he can beat you from the free throw line. So, you know, if we get down under two minutes, look for that player to maybe be player of the Saints target to send to the line and uh, get some extra possessions out of him. Yeah, no doubt about it. it. Hasn't shown a huge propensity for being able to shoot the ball. We did see the, the beautiful uh, swooping bank three out of him earlier, uh, which he shook his head at. But you really just don't want to let Bates beat you. I think Almeida's had a nice second half. He was pretty quiet in the first half. He's asserted himself well. And when you give a freshman who's on the varsity a little bit of confidence and get him going, that's that's what you see, that talent start to come out. Saints, an experienced group, not out of it by any means, but need a bucket here on this possession for sure. Deep throw. Jansen collects it. Once again, Lakeshore doing a good job pushing the Saints offense out and killing some time. Doing a very nice job not giving Davidson a lot of looks. He's going to end up having to go at one here that he might not love, but he knows that he's pressed for time. There it is, and he gets it. And I started to feel that anxiety. I know Ben Davidson's a lot more savvy on a basketball floor than I am. Sometimes, you know, as a guy who scored a lot of points, you just got to go score. And Caleb Bates does a nice job of answering. Yep. You know, if you're Caleb Bates, you better hit that shot, shooting the first shot, shooting the first opportunity. So, you know, a big bucket by him to get the lead back to six. Saints look to move the ball. Davidson goes to the low post, opts out. Matson. Fires from three and hits, and the pressure's on. They get it down to a one possession game, 57-54. Shorians lead with 2.41 to play in the fourth. You see the Saints seniors don't want to go easily. Back to back, two big shots. Coach Walton's going to use another timeout. And, uh, with 2.35 left, he's taking a risk there. He's going to draw us up against this 1-3-1 that Coach Sherrill's done out right now. So I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe Coach Sherrill come out and go a little pressure main here. and. Uh, try to change it up and maybe go back 1-3-1 after an offensive possession. Yeah, and I think with a, with a mature group like the Saints are, and they got a lot of guys who played a lot of basketball games. They're able to, and, and I think you've seen it in not having to call a bunch of timeouts here, they can adjust defenses on the fly, which is a, a hall or a trademark of a an experienced group. And I don't think Lakeshore has that luxury. I think you see the earlier timeouts out of Coach Walton. Probably explains that away a little bit. But, but they're definitely a young team. Last year, Lakeshore was the senior-laden team. They had a really, really nice team last year. And, um, you know, in Class A, it's a little tougher sledding, but I believe, I mean, they won the gold last year, I believe, and graduated five or six really, really talented seniors. And got a rebuilding year, but when they have a rebuilding year with some of the talent they have, they're going to be okay next year. And next year, look, you know, Tower was young, and Lakeshore is young, and, you know, St. Clair with Coach Charles going to be well coached, so the goal will be tough again next year as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. Shorian's in a rebuilding year. I mean, just to keep things in the proper perspective, we're six and four in the league. Really dropped one or two games that they shouldn't have, which is, speaks to their youth. And then 11 and six overall right now, averaging over 60 points a game. So this is a good team. It's on the floor right now, and, and they're proving it. Um, clear. Out in the man to man. Logan Petrikowski applying some defensive pressure just out of the outstretched arms of Davidson. And Evan James goes to the rack, can't get it. Almeida picks up the loose ball, goes at it, and Malik Miner with a big follow-up for the Shorians. That was a huge bucket as the Saints forced about three misses. Unfortunately, couldn't get the defensive rebound. Davidson works on the freshman Almeida, and yeah, you saw that one come in as there's a little bit of a hold. And it's gonna be on the floor. A little extra quicker after the play. See, it's a little chippy. Almeida's not been shy about that since the out, outside of this one. Saints have had a difficult time inbounding the basketball with any consistency today. Don't have the Caleb Bates play. 
a force there by Miner. Probably going to upset Coach Walton as so you get time a, is on their side. You get a turnover and you go down a force that, that's tough. Long gone by Davidson. A little bit of desperation there with a minute 40 to play. Another turnover by the Shorians showing their inexperience with a lead here. Kick. Matson's feet are set. Can't get it to go. Bates leads the charge. Good step through. Gets to 61, 54, little Euro step finish. Yeah, for a big man to be able to have that finish in his repertoire is uh, pretty uncanny. Ben Davidson with a good answer and a timeout by Coach Shero. I think in the helter skelter nature of what we just watched, we saw two outstanding <laughs> plays. One by Caleb Bates in his step through and then Ben Davidson goes all the way coast to coast, cuts it through and spins it off the glass for two. Yeah, that was uh, and you really don't appreciate those those plays uh, probably on TV in person they're a lot more uh, a lot more impressive and it's been interesting to see Lakeshore we mentioned their youth in the last couple possessions outside of the banks the banks um, Bates Euro step there they kind of helter skelter trying to push the ball when like you mentioned earlier the clock is their you know is their friend right now and they can work some possession here and try to burn some instead of they're keeping the Saints in it by uh, having these quick possessions and I mean thankfully or luckily for Lakeshore not thankfully um, they're able to hit a few shots in those possessions. 111 to play 61-56 the Shorians lead. So we'll try to see St. Clair play defense here try to, get a, try to get a steal or two maybe a reversal and if they're not able to get that they're going to see him try to extend the game out and make, make Lakeshore make some foul shots and they're still in the one and one, which is which is pivotal. You know, they're not going line for two. You got to make them earn that second shot. As you mentioned before, this might be a time where the coaching staff has that conversation about putting Evan James on the line. He seems to have the weakest shooting form on the roster. Nice draw up by the Saints. They get a turnover. Just what the doctor ordered. If they can finish with a bucket here. And they're going to get James with a foul. And Davidson goes right at him. And that was a huge turn in 10 seconds there. The Saints went from defending down five to getting the opportunity to go to the line and score at the clock stop. Yeah, absolutely. And the clock is not the Saints' friend. So if you can score with it stopped, you know, that's big. It helps you set your defense up. And uh, you can go from there to see if Davidson can knock him down. Davidson's first is good. A little shorter bench tonight from the Saints. You see a lot of depth use uh, throughout. Sometimes the game just dictates or the tempo makes you only comfortable to do so much. Nice job by Davidson. Gets the Saints within one possession. 58-61. Tough pass. And a nice play by Almeida. You almost like to see and Jansen go and collect that one. I think he was trying to do the risk reward assessment real fast and tried to hold off and credit Almeida yeah, did a great job great play by the freshman tough throw Saints going to chase him down and it goes out of bounds Saints are going to collect the ball at the baseline out of bounds I think that pressure you got to credit Donaldson and Davidson for hustling after that I think Almeida tried to check his rear view mirror a couple times and couldn't gather the basketball yeah he saw he saw two guys coming for a trap on him and uh, it might have made him pull up a little bit they're going to get a timeout from the Saints bench. And I'll have to, I have to say this, and, and this is a true compliment to Coach Walton and his staff and the, the Lakeshore kids. This is the best I have ever seen anybody scout the baseline out of bounds plays for St. Clair and Coach Sherrill's staff. And I've done this a lot of times <laughs> and watched a lot of these basketball games. I've never seen them have to throw five baseball passes to the backcourt off of this setup. Yep, and like you said, they are very well coached. I mean, Part of that is they've seen each other a lot in the past years, but we've seen teams see the Saints a lot in the last few years that routinely give up layups on their based on the bounce plays. And like you said, the Lakeshore's credit, they're not doing it. They're very well disciplined. And um, for as much as they struggled on defense in the, second, in the first half, second half they've been you know, pretty impressive on that end. And you know, it, Coach Walton has done a good job. And the name Derek Walton rings the bell. He is the father of former Michigan player, I believe current Miami Heat player, you know, Derek Walton, a uh, good point guard for the Wolverines, and he coached his son at, I believe, Harper Woods, Chandler Park, 
and took over Lakeshore for years ago and really turned this program around and made them made them a force in the match. Right there, the Saints forced into another timeout. It's a big spot. They're going to want to preserve those with the one possession basketball game and see what they can draw up this time. A good look. Go back to the old classic screen, the screener, and they're going to... So of all the complex, <laughs> multi-tiered plays that Coach Cheryl has, they go to the the one you learn in fifth grade basketball, and it gets them uh, an opportunity to shoot two foul shots. Yep, and Miner doesn't like the call, but the same thing we talked about in the first half. You come down on that, you know, uh, Bates did a good job staying straight up, and Miner brought his hands down to that, and Max and Abel hit the first big shot. Saints within two. A lot of options open to you now defensively. There's no need to go right into foul mode. Back rim, no good. Bates controls. You may foul, I think, if you get the right guy to catch. Tough play. Impromptu trap for the Saints. Deflection, there's your guy. And there it is. And he was calling timeout. Very, very smart play. I believe that's their last one. But the foul was on when he caught the ball. And you can see the Saints. I wasn't Jansen, like whoever else was in the trap was trying to foul and uh, James did a good job calling timeout as soon as, as soon as he got the ball. Yeah, really nice job. I think the Saints did exactly what they wanted to and unfortunately, again, that's, you know, two or three possessions here in crunch time where the Saints have been able to deflect an important pass and not come up with the, the follow-up to it. So, going to have to defend again. Seven fouls to their credit. So it'll be one and one. In Lakeshore, tough spot. They're not in the traditional spot in the baseline. They're a little closer to the corner, and that really limits your options because it takes away underneath the hoop where you could maybe come open on a screen. So Yeah, it draws that pass further away from the bucket and makes weird angles. Mm -hmm. So probably not looking if you're – you could maybe try to lob something on the opposite side. That's something that you have with Bates. But if you're just trying to inbound the basketball, I would probably be going to what they've gone to all day and that's my guy's taller than your guy's, so I'm going to throw it up there, let him go get it. And then Bates is a pretty good foul shooter, and it's not James. So I'm sure everything Coach Cheryl's talking about right now is trying to pinch him for somebody else to catch. Risk-reward, though, you end up giving up a possible layup opportunity to somebody else. Sinclair's not going to defend the ball here. There's the pinch for Bates. They go up top, and they're going to let somebody else catch, and that's Malik Hill. They get a quick trap, throw to Bates over the middle. Backside was open. Saints are going to have to make a choice here pretty quick. Quick trap. Malik Miner goes up, gets fouled. It's going to get fouled anyhow, so as long as it doesn't go in, nothing really hurt. 30 seconds to go. Big foul shots coming up for Miner. The junior. It's Davidson's fourth, but, but you said good use of the foul there. Not let him go up and get the clean layup. Make him earn these two at the line. Miner's first is long, a little amped up, crunch time, you got to find that happy medium between comfort and know that you're a little amped up, go front rim and finish, can't do it, so 30 seconds to go and Miner's second attempt can just make it a one possession game, but it's a three pointer that the Saints need, don't so need it necessarily right now. Look for them to attack and get a quick two and that's what Davidson's trying to do right here, not able to get it, kind of a forced job by Ben. And draws his fifth. Ben Davidson, the St. Clair Saints all-time leading scorer, as honored here tonight. Happens to pick up his fifth foul and will exit the floor with the Saints down three. Oftentimes fans get a little antsy. You get 30 seconds to enter a player after a fifth foul. Oftentimes, coaches will take that in order to give people a rest. Here's the guy you want shooting foul shots. Let's see if he can prove us wrong, Sam. Trickles around and won't go. And, and unfortunately, on the rebound attempt, Ian Jansen has it go off of his fingertips, and it's going to go back to Lakeshore. Saints in a big spot here, trying to pinch Caleb Bates, not able to get position. And it goes off of Donaldson. 
a very concerted effort right here for St. Clair to not let Caleb Bates catch. Difficult very, task. Very concerted effort for Lakeshore to get him the ball. Ball's loose. This around goes the other way. He pulls it back. Coach Cheryl is going to get a timeout. All right, guys, we got a pretty exciting basketball game here. The Saints faithful have come alive, and they're on their feet. 62-59, lead, a lead for the Shorians, and the Saints use a timeout to draw up what you got to imagine is going to be a three-point opportunity for somebody. Yeah, I, I didn't see if anybody subbed in. Um, you know, options on the floor, you probably want Jansen in the corner, or if you can get Matson open, um, those are probably options one and two. Pete Trukowski showing propensity to hit the big shot, so maybe look for this to draw some up for him, too, and it'll be interesting to see how Lakeshore comes out uh, to defend this. Um, or, I mean, always have the option if they want to let the clock down to five and maybe foul uh, before the shot goes up. St. Clair's still in the one and one so you make to make free throws and then count your guys execute. So. I, I can tell you that if I'm Coach Walton, I'm letting them catch it and I'm going to foul them. Um, that's just the way I would play it in short time up three. And you got to look at the, you know, if they make both free throws, your next foul, you shoot two guaranteed. No so. doubt about it. All those options to look at, you maybe let them catch, run two or three seconds off and look for that, look for the easy foul. And um, it's a strategy a lot of coaches have implemented and you can shake, <laughs> you shake your head either way and what could have been. But like you said, I, you know, I live with my guys boxing out, especially with Bates down low. Um, and go from there. Saints going to run this right through. It looks like the Shorians are going to try and defend it. They're going to get Donaldson a look here. He pulls. Bank, good. We're going to see some overtime here. Sean Donaldson with a bank three. Gets it to go. And the Shorians are stunned. And as much as it has lit up the crowd, the Saints need to regather and figure out how they're going to play overtime basketball without their all-time leading scorer. So what a, great, what a great shot. I think I got the bank call off just in time for them. Right, well, uh, <laughs> from our angle, that was the only way it was going in. That's so. correct. We, we had a good look at it, and that was the only prayer it had because it was offline. But Sean Donaldson, the sophomore, answers the bell, gets it to go, and let's see if he, we can uh, find a way to reward that effort <laughs> with a big overtime period, four minutes without Ben Davidson. This is not going to be easy. Just the way Coach Cheryl drew it up, I'm sure. Um, you know, I guess it all comes back to being even. We had uh, James Bank went in earlier. Donaldson gets his retribution there. So all is square. We're 62-62 with four minutes to go. And, you know, I know these seniors wouldn't have any other way. Look for Matson to step up here with Davidson on the bench. And, um, you know, a big, big shot. Now, got a channel of energy. You can't come out too hyped up here and let that shot now beat you. So um, we'll see how the Saints play on defense. And momentum is definitely on their side. But they got to come out and play under control. Get some free basketball here on CTV Cable Channel 6. Heading to an extra frame. All tied up, 62-62. The Saints, a very defensive jump ball alignment here as Ian Jansen taps with base. And unsurprisingly, possession goes to the Shorians. And Troy Disarad is going to defend. Everybody seems to have collected themselves. We're going to play some more basketball. Good job by Disarad. Get the turnover right out. Five-second call. And there wasn't any separation there, and I wasn't counting, but it, it may definitely seem like five. I honestly, it didn't prompt me to think anything of it until he called, and I was kind of surprised by the call, but now that I'm looking at how much time elapsed off the clock, kind of lines up and makes sense. Good undercut there. Oh, that's a tough call. I left shaking my head at that one. Mario Matson would not have traveled, traveled not for the Lakeshore player that took his legs out while he had the ball. Unfortunate turnover there, and the ball goes back to Lakeshore. Bates wants the ball, and St. Clair's are doing everything they can. You know, Jansen's ready to pinch on the backside um, if they're if they're going to try to go over the top. The end of regulation three-pointer serves the point of you foul. <laughs> Chalk one up in the foul or defend research. Yeah, and the foul. And that, that's the reason why you foul. I mean, we talked about it right there. And if you foul you, they don't get the chance to get the shot up. And thankfully for us, they didn't, and we're here. 
Jansen gets the fire, long range, can't get it. That one did hit the wire and nobody called it. It's gonna go back to Lakeshore. A good look there, Jansen had his feet set. It was a little deeper than normal, but it's just a shot he can hit. Mentioned the foul or defend strategy there. See if we get back to that spot, what somebody chooses to do. It's certainly possible in an overtime game. We had a delay a game by Almeida. Something you don't see very often, a good catch. Made his cut out of bounds. Mario Madsen nearly turns it over, a little miscommunication there. Pietrzykowski trying to find his way through, does. Goes right at Bates, Bates the rim protector. Saints good ball movement, Donaldson tries this luck again, and gets it. Sean Donaldson answering the bell right now. A little more conventional on that one. Shot that one with a lot of confidence. Shot that ball with a lot of confidence and um, there was no doubt when he caught that ball he was shooting it, so we'll see. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but. We had a long whistle, I thought it was a timeout. I think the ball may have been knocked away. Tough for us to see with all the standing Saints fans. Saints lead by one, 2.21 to play. Sean Donaldson's come up big, two buckets in a row. Saints gotta defend. Lakeshore's gotta find a way to get Caleb Bates a touch. James thinks about it, thinks better of it. There's the touch, and there's the two. You know, that's, that's just a good job by Lakeshore to recognize the mismatch. And Probably not one they've taken advantage of enough tonight, quite frankly, but a good job there by Bates to catch and finish. Well, Davidson off the floor with five fouls. And he's been, the reason why he's in for so much foul trouble is the effort put forth in defending Bates. Uh, so he's given him some trouble and cost them the overtime period here. The yeah, Saints gotta go, that ball. That ball was given real early. Saints able to inbound. No time to panic. Good ball movement. They're going to... Great call. Shuffled his pivot foot before he made his drive and just didn't come out of control when he made the catch. Tough break. Sean Donaldson certainly has earned his way to be forgiven for that. <laughs> but he's got to go defend now. Pietrzykowski on the freshman Almeida. Donaldson steps in front, loose ball. Almeida doing a good job. Going to get a tie up here. Almeida asking for a foul, and I'm sorry, buddy, but I don't think so. Saints going to have the basketball. Good the job. Opportunity to, inbound. So Donaldson, a little turnover on one, and good job to jump that hand off on that end. Unfortunately, not, to come away, not able to come away clean with it, but got the Saints ball back and a uh, chance to take the lead here. Saints inbound clean, minute 20 to go, down one. Just need to be able to run their stuff and get somebody a clean look. Saints in trouble with five seconds here. I don't think they're gonna give him the NBA continuation. <laughs> Logan wanted it, but I'm not even sure that would've been good in the NBA. <laughs> it's gonna get to go one and one for his trouble. This will be the last time that the Saints shoot the one and one bonus. It's become an expectation, Sam. If Logan <laughs> Pietrzykowski's got to make a bucket, he's making it. 66, all square, minute 12 to go. Pietrzykowski on the line. Gets the roll, gets the senior roll on senior night, gives the Saints a lead. Saints got to find something to do with Bates here. Logan spent a lot of time in the morning working that rim at Odom one. So, good big free throws from Pietrzykowski there. It's a shot he's envisioned before, I'm sure. Saints pinching Bates, allowing James to stay clear on the opposite side. He's going to have to hit this shot for them. It's the shot you wanted to give him. That's a heck of a shot. It doesn't look good, but it's dropped, and that's a big shot for Evan James. The Saints, that's the look they were giving up with the defense they were playing. Yeah, and like you said, it's not convincing, but he hit a couple of those today, and... No doubt. You know, big time play. Donaldson on Bates. Good patience not to overdo it, having had the hot hand a couple of times. Gets a look and a drive. Gets it knocked away. Pietrzykowski, and they're going to get him for a loose ball foul. 
And that's reminiscent of the foul that should have been called on Matson where they popped him for a travel. If somebody's sliding on the floor out of control, they're still responsible for their body. And as a coach, it's a call you hate, but it's a call the refs have to make because that displaces the player and, you know, and it, it would have been a turnover for the Saints if they had not made that call. Clearly possession for Logan Petrakowski. Who can't get that foul shot to go. Gets a second look at it, as we mentioned. Saints with, or excuse me, Lakeshore with 10 fouls, so it's going to be two shots. Second one rattles in, and it's all tied up at 68. 21 seconds to go. Saints are going to have to defend it here on the home floor. Scrap and claw. And I'm Lakeshore. I'm, I'm Lakeshore. I'm looking to Bates here. And, um, I won't be surprised to see St. Clair maybe come out in that 1-3-1 to try to eliminate that inside that inside look for the shoreline. Well, especially you're playing a little chess here and you got I'm not certain that Coach Walton has any additional timeouts. So you get one. You get one and I, and I don't know. Yeah, right. I don't know that they expired. So I, I if he doesn't and you come out 1-3-1 whatever he's drawing right now probably doesn't really apply. So you're, you're then pretty much asking the freshman guard Almeida to figure it out and if you're him you just tell him to drive to the bucket see if you can get a dump down to Bates and, yeah, and have him pull one in. Worst case I'm isolate Almeida and go to the bucket he doesn't not able to make the layup you got the big guy down there maybe clean up the mess so um, you got he has some options definitely. If you're, coach, if you're coach Cheryl you're trying to get a stop and a quick timeout um, if they shoot earlier than the clock allows or expires. Yeah, but they're probably playing for one here. You'd like to see the shot go up probably about four seconds. If there is a miss, it gives you a chance, uh, you know, to get a rebound and go back in. But if there is a miss, you got to make sure you stay off people's back. You don't want to send St. Clair down with the chance to win the game of three throws. Yep, as an official, high tension here. You don't want to be the one that determines the outcome of the game, but you don't want to miss a call that is rightful, you know, that you earned in terms of position. Saints go man here, so... A little different than what we thought. They're gonna stick to what brought them. They get Bates a touch. Not they're not gonna call that. Bates unfortunate for the Saints. And Bates is gonna go with a putback. A little conversation. And the Saints have a timeout with two seconds to play, I believe. Two seconds remain. Coach Sherrill gets a timeout. Lobbied for a charging call, but didn't get it. The Saints may get a look here. Um, two seconds is plenty of time. If you can get something, you know, running toward the bucket, you can get a dribble and a shot. But it's going to take a Sean Donaldson type <laughs> make. And really unfortunate for the Saints. I thought Jansen did a good job getting the help side. I thought he was in position. Um, and like you said, a lot of times refs don't want to make that call. And he didn't make it. And well, the Saints have two seconds here to do some work. And you know, two seconds is a long time. One big pass up, and uh, they'll see what they can do with it. So I think the Saints did everything they could defensively to stop that ball. Unfortunately, with Jansen being displaced, it left nobody there to get the rebound outside of Bates, and he was able to corral and get the layup. Yeah, unfortunate. You know, and, and it goes into the psychology of an official a little bit. I, I can't say that, it, that I would want an official to make that call. I think if you're being reflective about it, the issue really is that you know you can't let him catch there, mm -hmm. and the Saints did. So did they pin him and do everything after he caught that was, that was to the best of their ability? Yes, but you can't. There's one guy you can't let catch and you put yourself in that position by giving him that catch. So long odds here for the Saints. They got a good thrower in Jansen who can run the baseline. He lets one go. And Matson fires and is not going to get that one to go. So the Saints' luck runs out. Uh, had to go through an overtime period with without their leading score and drop the game in the MAC tournament. They will not move on to the finals. And... They're going to play in a consolation on Friday against Warmwood's Tower or New Haven, whoever lost that game. Yeah, and that was, I mean, great job by the Saints to even fight back through overtime. And unfortunate the way it ended, but, you know, a lot to be proud of. And um, a lot of seniors played very well tonight. And I think, I believe they'll be back here Friday with the opponent to be determined. So 
Yep. We will sign off from there. Yep, we're going to take off. Thank you very much for joining us here on CTV. We'll see you next time. This CTV sports presentation has been brought to you by St. Clair Chevy, Buick, GMC, We Care. By Murphy Inn Restaurant and Hotel in St. Clair. North Star Bank, guiding the way. By St. Clair Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, We Care. By Neiman's Family Market. By St. Clair's Ace Hardware. And by CTV Community TV in Marine City and St. Clair.